Some of the ambiguity in this video on making sauerkraut may bother some of you, but there's a reason for it and it's because this is your sauerkraut and there's a range of ways that you can do it. Hey everybody, I've been really excited about this video. Today we're gonna turn this head of cabbage into delicious homemade sauerkraut. For those of you who haven't been watching videos through the week, this video is designed to do this project with us. And it's not too late for you. If you have cabbage in the fridge, go get it right now, pull it out. There's a few other things that you're gonna need to join us in making sauerkraut. Some salt. This is just plain salt. There's no iodine in it. Ideally, your salt doesn't have iodine in it, but there's nothing fancy about that salt. I do have just a spoon for measuring salt. Um, a quart mason jar. You'll also need a ring for the jar, and then either just a paper towel or a napkin, a piece of fabric or a coffee filter, one of those, a knife, your head of cabbage, I have a cutting board, and a nice sized bowl. That's all you need. <clears throat> I'm gonna start cutting up my cabbage. Um, but before I cut up my cabbage, I'll give you a minute, if you haven't gotten everything together yet, and I'm gonna talk about fear and fermenting. There's a lot of different approaches to sauerkraut, and you'll see some people with a very scientific approach. But there's other approaches to sauerkraut as well. I've been listening a lot and following a guy named Sandor Katz, and he is what you might call a fermentation revivalist. And I love his approach. I love everything about it. And you'll see a lot of his thinking reflected in what I say and what I do here today. Fermenting is something that is a living process. And there's no reason to try to say there's only one way to do it. There's only one correct way. As far as fear with fermenting goes, there has never been a documented case of a serious illness that was a result of fermented vegetables. It's actually a very safe thing to do. Even with a range of recipes, methods, and uh, salinities, or amounts of salt. So let's cut up our cabbage here. I like to slice mine long and just really kind of fine strips. And that's how I'm gonna do it today. You can do chunks, but cutting it into nice, thin, kind of fine slices does a couple things. Possibly the most significant is it makes it really um, easy to get your brine established. And I'll show you what I mean in just a few minutes. You can put your chopped up pieces into your bowl over here as you go. One of the coolest things about making homemade sauerkraut is there's nothing static about it. The bacterial life that develops in your jar is constantly changing. In fact, the lactobacillus bacteria that everyone talks about doesn't actually become dominant for days. There's other bacteria that start the process. So for those of you who have never made sauerkraut, and maybe some of you have never tried sauerkraut and you're joining us for this, what is sauerkraut? Someone asked, do you have to put vinegar in sauerkraut? No, you don't put vinegar in it. Basically, sauerkraut is a fermented food and all you do is provide a environment um, for life, for the bacteria, that are going to process this food for us. Where do these bacteria come from, you might ask? The bacteria are actually already present on the cabbage. I know that kind of sounds weird, but it's true. The bacteria that we need are already here. Just a few of them, but we're gonna give them an environment where they can prosper. Why do you put salt in sauerkraut? Well, there's a lot of reasons to put salt in sauerkraut. Initially, salt provides some protection from 
you know, whatever, whatever other bacteria are um, in the environment or on your food and helps initially preserve your food. But you don't really put enough salt in to preserve your food if it wasn't for the bacteria. And then this is the cool part. The good bacteria proliferate in this environment and they create something called lactic acid. And they actually turn the food to the acidic side. So while you don't put vinegar in it, it does become acidic. And that is a big part of the um, reason that sauerkraut is a food that will last. It's what preserves the cabbage. Salt does other things in the process as well. It actually preserves the physical structure of the food because salt slows down enzymes which can make sauerkraut mushy over many months. And salt also interacts with the pectins that are in food and helps keep some body. The old timers, from what I hear, used to put uh, a lot more salt than we do nowadays. Nowadays, people are shooting for, say, two to five percent salinity, probably two being um, a goal for a lot of people. But I've heard that in traditional sauerkrauts, these are sauerkrauts gonna, that are going to be left um, just in the back room or in a pantry for a year, that they would use up to 10 percent salinity, which is a very large amount of salt but they were trying to preserve it for a year. So now we have our cabbage in front of us. It's beautiful. And the next thing we're gonna do is add salt. I'm gonna start by just putting uh, about a teaspoon of salt in here. Some of you are going to be disappointed today that I do not tell you how much salt to put in here. I'm gonna put my second teaspoon of salt in here And I recommend starting with a fairly small amount of salt. And then what we're going to do is start just massaging and smashing and working the salt into all of it. And it's nice and crunchy. <clears throat> you might ask me, why would I invite you to a sauerkraut making event and not tell you how much salt to put into it? Well, there's a couple reasons for that. I think the biggest reason though is that you can use a significant range of salinity and still have a very excellent product at the end of it. As a general rule, if you don't put enough salt in, you may have more issues um, with mold, you may have more issues with batches going bad, and if you put too much salt in, it's going to be just nasty to eat and it will ferment very slowly because the salt at a high enough level will actually inhibit the good bacteria as well. So why am I not going to tell you how much salt to put in? This is a living food and you're making this food for you. I'm going to have you taste this in just a minute and you're going to decide how much salt to put in. As a rule of thumb, shooting for a 2% salinity, if you started with uh, one and three quarter pound head of cabbage, which is kind of a small to medium cabbage, then you're going to put about a tablespoon of salt in it. What we're doing is just smashing this and working it. And what you'll see as you go is you'll see that moisture starts to be pulled out of the cabbage. And this is through the action of osmosis. You remember that? And this is the beginning of our brine. I want you to taste it. How salty does it taste to you? Is that something that you'd like to eat? Hopefully it's not too salty already. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt to mine. And if you wanna play it on the safe side, make your first batch a little saltier. But I have made probably six batches of sauerkraut in the past few weeks. And I have never um, done anything but just taste and add kind of a reasonable amount in relation to um, that tablespoon um, per one and three quarter pounds, which by the way fits into a quart mason jar. I hope this will fit into the quart mason jar and I've not had a single batch go bad. I love Sandor Cat's perspective on this. This is how he teaches it. 
I'm not crazy for telling you. I'm not gonna tell you how much salt to put in. Some of you are probably opening up another window right now and Googling how much salt should I put in sauerkraut? But I'm telling you, you don't need to do that. So Sandor Katz, if you watch his, any of the videos he does, he says, taste it and make it how you like it. At this point, you may wanna take out something like a rolling pin or there, you could use anything that's hard and pound it some. This will help just expedite the process of creating your brine. I've chosen to use very basic techniques, methods, and tools for this video. Because my goal with this video was to get a lot of people to make sauerkraut with me and just get people to go for it. I think that I've done that. In fact, I'd like to ask you if you actually are making sauerkraut with us today to leave a comment on this video and just tell us what um, state you live in if you live in the United States or tell us what country you're in if you're in another country. Just leave a comment and tell us where you live. Um, and so we'll know who actually made sauerkraut with us. If you're not making sauerkraut, don't tell me where you live. The next thing we're gonna do is take our clean mason jar and we're gonna pack it. If you have a canning funnel, you should pull it out right now. But like I said, I'm just showing you how you can do this with the most basic tools. One of the neat things about making sauerkraut at home is you can choose the end results and that has to do with more than salt what we're gonna do with this jar when we're done is we're gonna set it on the fridge and just let it sit there a week and then in a week I'm gonna open this back up and I'd actually invite you to do this as well a big question in a lot of your minds if you've never done this is how long does it take for sauerkraut to be ready. I told you earlier in this video that sauerkraut is actually this developing process of life. And one bacteria, or actually a handful of bacteria, start the process and they hand off later to the family lactobacillus or, and then the lactobacillus continue the process. So depending on when you taste the sauerkraut, it's gonna taste very different. And then you have the enzymes starting to break down the food. You have all the cell bodies of bacteria, living and dead, that actually provide a significant amount of nutrition. What I'm gonna tell you is that some people like sauerkraut five days old. It's still crunchy and fresh and delicious. Let's pour our brine into this jar with the last of the sauerkraut, the last of the cabbage. Okay, so my jar is too full. I'm gonna actually remove some of this cabbage and set it aside because it's too much. If, uh, if, you, if I had a lot, I would do a whole nother jar, but I'm actually probably just gonna eat this sauerkraut with salt on it because you need a couple inches, let's say two inches of head space um, just to make sure you got enough room. I'm going to press the cabbage down. I'm pushing the air out. What I was saying is that some people like sauerkraut at three to five days old. It's crunchy, it's delicious, it's salty, and it has just a little edge of sour to it. But some people will tell you that's not even real sauerkraut. You know, you have to wait for months to eat it. People like sauerkraut at different stages, the longer it stays in, the softer it will get and the stronger the sour flavor. So I'm gonna recommend to you that at one week, you open your jar and try your sauerkraut. And if you love it at one week old, put it in the fridge. If you want to continue on the flavor journey, then just put it back in the cabinet or back on your fridge and wait another week and try it. This is 
an adventure that you will never go on if you just buy store-bought sauerkraut. All right, back to practicality. So my brine, I have lots of brine, is totally covering the vegetables. If you don't have enough brine in your jar to cover the cabbage, you can mix a little bit of water with salt and pour it over. I think a teaspoon and two cups of water should do and won't cause you any problems. You can pour that over to cover the cabbage. The environment that I talked about earlier that these bacteria need is an environment without air. And that's why it's important that all of your cabbage is covered with brine. I'm gonna use a cabbage leaf to press the cabbage down so it actually stays under the brine. So what I'm gonna do is take the tip of the cabbage leaf and press it as far down against this side as I can and then I'm gonna kind of fold it in half and give it a little shove here and push as many of those little bits down as possible. So all of my cabbage now is under the brine. If you have a little bit of that leaf sticking up, it's not a big deal. The next thing I'm gonna do here is take my little piece of paper towel. You could use a piece of cotton or a, um, you could also use a coffee filter works great. I'm gonna put it there over my top and I'm just gonna tear off the excess here. You need something that will allow your sauerkraut to breathe because it will be breathing, mostly exhaling um, carbon dioxide and you'll see it bubbling up over the next few days. I am done, I'm done. What I'm gonna do with this next and what I would recommend you do is take your jar and set it in a place um, where it won't get knocked over by kids, haha. Uh -huh. I'm gonna put mine on top of the fridge and I'm not gonna really look at it or mess with it again for a week. I will be thinking of it constantly though because we just ate all of the last of our sauerkraut yesterday, so I'm excited about this. Actually, I'm gonna make a video when we open our sauerkraut in a week. So if you wanna join us on the journey, um, next Saturday I'll, I'll post a video with us tasting our sauerkraut and I'd love for you to do the same thing. Taste your sauerkraut, see how you like it, I'll probably keep mine out for longer than that, but if you love it at that point, you can put it in the fridge. For now, it's gonna be at room temperature. You don't have to worry about it. Don't even have to think about it. Um, in a week, you may need to skim. If a little mold um, forms on the top of the brine, you may need to skim that off, but you don't have to worry about th that till next week. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I didn't address. If you're primarily interested in the health benefits of sauerkraut, if you eat sauerkraut throughout the process of fermentation, it just might be the best way to benefit from all those good bacteria because you'll actually meet different bacteria on day seven and day 14. It's not a static environment. It's not a static process. This is your sauerkraut. You're gonna make it how you like it and I think you're gonna love it. Thank you all for joining us and I'll see you with a sauerkraut next Saturday.